Yo, today we talk about dogs that rock, run together in a flock, around the clock, no time to walk. We be talking about the hefty husky, smart dogs they be, robust and trusty, pulling them sleds through deep snow, all slashy, the big brother Malamutes all thick and chunky. Yeah. Them huskies all be like slim and scruffy, trained to be athletes since a little puppy. Have you ever heard of the dog named Balto? He was a valiant side husky hero. He saved the village of Alaskan people from a nasty little microscopic foe. Story did happen quite some time ago, and actually Balto didn't do it solo. There were lots of other dogs and humans also, and some say the real hero was named Togo. Of his team, Togo was lead commando. He pulled that sled for record 5 time combo over a crazy distance of 425 kilo. Yeah, they ran three whole days through crazy thick snow, through freezing temps and over frozen river flow, speeding west like a black and white torpedo. So the village of Nome could live to see tomorrow. The Sotoko greatest honors we bestow. To his Central Park statue, you can say hello. And on Disney, he has his very own show. Yo. How's it going? So, Sam here, with your usual random dose. Of fun facts, uh, yes. So uh, yeah, that that rap was just to uh, just speed things up, you know, a little TLDR. Too long didn't read. Um, it's more like TLDL, I guess. Too long didn't listen. Um, yes. So in case you are, you know, you just want the uh, summary, you want the synopsis, you want the abstract. Yeah, you just go ahead and listen to that that rap. Assuming you can make sense of it. Okay. Now, uh, how is your day going? So uh, happy, happy Tuesday! Uh, I think a lot of people are starting to uh, get back to you know the biz, uh, back to work, in office, or if not, then uh, within the next couple of days, right? Tomorrow is the thirteenth, thirteenth, fourteenth. Yep, when uh, the MCO phase four is supposed to conclude. Okay, so um, yeah. How is your day coming along? We got some uh, got some rain there. It's good. Nice big dose of rain. Yeah. So uh, it's a little little later than my usual usual um, sessions, but uh, you know, yeah, I got a little preoccupied. Okay. So now, um, 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 let's hop to our usual. Uh, today today we have a Chinese lesson. Well, it's not so much a lesson. It's more like a it's just a little re- revision. You know, it's a new. Okay. So. Uh, without further ado, what is this one? So for those of you that can read, you know, go ahead. Um, for those of you that can't, let's work our way through it. So this is Kai Juan You Yi. Kai Juan You Yi. Okay, so what does it mean? So I'm sure you guys have seen Kai before. So Kai is the Chinese character for open. Kai Kai Men Kai. See, it looks like a gate. Kai Men You You means to have, and uh, Yi. It means beneficial. Okay, so uh, that's a pretty simple one. Kai Juan Yi. Yeah, reading is good for you. Okay, and this is just one of those Chen that has that has aged reasonably well, I'd say. Um, you know, the reading is still relevant in our culture, uh, although the format may be different. I suppose uh, you know these days it's more of a, you know instead of parchments and scrolls uh, we have you know kindles and computer screens yep okay all right kai jun you yi so keep up that reading guys keep it up all right moving along so uh, as you heard just now we are going to talk about them dogs yeah okay but not just any dogs these dogs okay these dogs that were as instrumental to man as horses were uh, but more in the, the cold places. Okay, so I mean, horses, well, you know, were still were still employed and used in in frigid climates, you know, like Mongolia and you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, but dogs, yes, sled dogs, um, they were very instrumental in moving things around um, when all other methods were not available. Okay, so that's what today's story is about. Uh, but first, a bit of background. So these these little cute chunky fellows I mentioned were, are called Alaskan Malamutes. So you may see them today around. So they, they do have a little bit of that sharp characteristic um, feature that you see in their buddies, their Siberian Husky buddies. Okay, so uh, why do I mention this? Because um, back in the day, well, when I say back in the day, I mean like you know a couple a hundred years ago, or so a couple, couple hundred, uh, you know, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, uh, you know, when when man was 
using these guys for their their daily transport through the snow. Uh, the Malamutes, which is on the left, the Alaska Malamutes, the thick, thicker and stronger, I suppose. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, the the more the more heavy built dogs were preferred. Right by uh, the mushers, they call them mushers because they go they go they go mush mush. You know the the people that that drive the drive the husky trains. I guess they weren't called husky, husky trains back then, they were just called sled, uh, sled dogs, okay? So, um, you know, even in the early 1900s, um, the, the popular sled dogs were these guys, were the Alaska Malamutes, you know, these, these guys, these cute, chunky fellows, okay? Very friendly and uh, very, very powerful and good at running long distances. So if you have one of these guys, you know that they're not sprinters, they are slow burn marathoners, okay? Then, okay, so uh, these were the popular ones. But slowly, uh, over over um, the years, these the Siberian Huskies were brought in from where you guessed it, Siberia. Okay, so they were the first documented Siberian Huskies in America were brought over by uh, Russians. All right, a Russian fur trader named William Gusak. <laughs> Gusak. Okay, yeah. So uh, of course, you know, people didn't expect the Siberian Huskies to be as uh, good. As their slightly bigger brothers, okay, just because you know, of course, they're they're of a slimmer, smaller build, all right. So they, you know, they're, they're not they're obviously not as heavy, not as much muscle mass, okay. But they started to perform really well at the Alaskan sweepstakes races, okay. So they have they have dog races just to see, you know. Uh, and then, so in the summer of 1909, an English musher named Fox Ramsey he imported 60 of the finest huskies. Right, from Siberia to Alaska, Nome. Okay. And in 1910, uh, the uh, these an all Siberian Husky team uh, won first place. All right. Uh, in uh, what remains a record today. Okay. So that, back to where the story begins. In the winter of 1925. Um, okay. To be fair, it's always winter there. It's just how below below zero it goes. Okay. So it was winter. Okay. Not a good time. All right, very dark, dark times in Alaska. Okay, in 1925, and a deadly outbreak of diphtheria occurred in in the remote town of Nome. That I mentioned just now, Alaska. Okay, uh, threatening the lives of 10,000 people. All right. So diphtheria is, uh, in case you haven't heard, it's a disease caused by a uh, gram-positive bacteria, a little bacteria, you know, little dude. Uh, and it uh, basically it infects your your upper respiratory tract, your nose, your throat, uh, you know, your, your lungs. Uh, basically, it makes you, it, uh, it makes your lymph glands swollen, it makes your your neck swollen, and uh, it gives you a fever. You have difficulty breathing. You have a runny nose. You know the usual stuff that that these uh, these little microbes tend to do. You know, to mess with your mess with your breathing. Okay, and uh, it's um, it's quite a nasty disease. Okay, and yes, uh, and it's uh, children are particularly vulnerable. Okay, so younger younger kids, um, they tend to succumb to the disease. Okay, so you, you can die from it. Okay, uh, so uh, um, at this time there there was treatment. They had uh, antibodies. It was it's called an antitoxin at the time, but basically it was antibodies that you would administer to people that have caught the diphtheria and it helps them fight it off. Okay, so there's higher higher survivability rate. So these days they don't they don't use that anymore. They just they just use like antibiotics because it's a bacteria. All right, um, but yeah, that back then that was that was what was uh, the treatment. Okay, so this town of Nome needed to get this uh, diphtheria serum. Okay, to administer to the people to save them. Okay, but the problem was they were very very far away. Okay, so husky husky here. Oh, look at that. That's the huskies. Okay, here I'll show you how far. So this is Nome. Look at that nice place. Only minus three. Okay, now the nearest place that they could get the serum from was a place called Nenana. Nenana. Where is Nenana? There. Nenana. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't look that far, right? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll put it into perspective. This is Alaska. See, it's so far away that I can't even. Google can't even give me directions on how to get between the places. Why? Because there are no roads. Okay, this place is a this place is a wasteland. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you what it's like on the map. Okay, so this is the United States of America. This is Canada. This is Alaska. Right? It's like, look how big it is. It's like it's like you know, one big 
block, right? And this is how far apart these places were. This is the nearest place to get the life-saving serum. Okay, and uh, so the actual distance is a little over a thousand kilometers, one thousand and eighty-five kilometers, six hundred and seventy-four miles in American units. Okay, so a thousand kilometers with no roads. Okay, and you know, no, 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 definitely no ships. Can't, can't get there. Uh, and uh, okay, at the time, yes, they did have planes, but there was a blizzard. Was a blizzard coming, happening? Because it's winter. They couldn't fly them. They couldn't fly it over. Okay, so they turned to the only option they had. The only option. These dudes. Okay, sled dogs. Okay, so they they called on uh, twenty teams. Okay, of these sled dogs to relay. So you know what a relay is. So you know, obviously, they're not gonna they're not gonna make it all the way by themselves. So they would relay. Okay. A will pass it to B, B will pass it to C, C will pass it to D, okay? So they relay their way across the frozen wastelands, okay? Because this place, this place, this place is tough, okay? It's mountainous and snowy and it's, you know, it's a lot of crap. A lot of, a lot of nothing, nothingness in there, okay? So they assembled an emergency team to to get them, uh, to get the uh, the vials, the serum over to Gnome, okay? This little port. Alright, so this team included, uh, of course, a whole bunch of Siberian Huskies. Alright, and a very famous Alaskan uh, musher named Leonard Sapala. That's him here. Leonard! Okay, okay, and this is his team. Oh, or one of. Okay, so while the, um, the, the final leg to Nome was run by a dog named Balto, which was uh, was but was by a different musher, not by not by this guy named Sapala. Okay, okay, and that dog, Balto, was uh, was obviously named the hero. I mean, it wasn't just that one dog; it was a lot of other dogs. But he was the lead dog. Okay, so Balto and his musher became famous. Um, but a lot of people over time uh, argued, and the people who knew about the situation, you know. Which well, I guess not wasn't that many, but the people who knew the true story said that this dog here, Togo, was the real hero. Okay, Togo. Okay, not this guy. All right. So there you go. That's Togo. So um, I mean, why? What about Togo? Makes him so special. Why is he the hero? Okay, because Togo and his team and his musher, uh, Sapala. They traveled over five times as far as any of the other teams. Okay, so all the other teams on average traveled about 31 miles, okay, which is about 50 kilometers. 50, 50, okay? Togo and his team, they traveled 264 miles. Okay, that's 425 kilometers. 400 kilometers. That's like, that's like here to like Paskel, to like, you know, Nagari Sambilan. 425 kilometers, okay? It took them three days. Okay, doggies, doggies. Yeah. Right. Right. So they were they were one of the middle legs, okay, and they went through some they went through some crazy, crazy stuff. Okay, I, I won't go into too much detail, but uh, basically Togo uh, even saved the whole team from drowning, okay, because they were going over some, some uh, frozen riverbed and you know, yeah, you know, one thing led to another, they went in. Uh, and uh, uh, Leonard had the idea as they were sinking. To, to tie a line around Togo, the lead dog, because he's at the front, and he and to throw him to safety so that he could pull the rest of them out, which is a little crazy. You think about it, you know, one one dog pulling all, all of them out. But yeah, I, I guess you know, based on the situation, it theoretically could have worked, could have worked, except the line, the the rope broke. Okay, that's that's how crazy it is. Okay, so the dog didn't break, but the rope broke. Okay, but uh, apparently, so Togo was smart enough to to drop and roll so that the rope wrapped around his body and then he pulled them to safety so they didn't die yay okay yeah that's that's uh, just just one of the one of the many tales okay so basically um yeah so basically everyone says that the uh, you know togo was one of the true heroes i mean yeah you know every all, all of these guys were heroes right they were like 20 teams all all of them you know all of them contributing to uh, bringing the 
the you know the anti anti toxin the serum to the town. Uh, but you know, I guess you know us being humans, we gotta we gotta single out some of them. You know. So yes, so um, twelve year old Togo, he was twelve at the time. Okay, which is uh, which is crazy crazy distance crazy. Okay, so here here's a picture of Leonard, Sapala, and Togo. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so finally uh, in two thousand and one, he uh, he got the, the the recognition that he deserved. I guess I guess you could say that. So yeah, I guess uh, you know the, now we think back to the great. It was called the Great Race of Mercy. You know all these twenty teams in relay, going from Nanana all the way to uh, Nome. Okay, and in the end, yes, many lives were saved, thanks to the heroic Togo and all the many many other dogs and people involved. Okay, so uh, in 2001 they gave him his, his own statue, so that's his mount. Uh, obviously not not the real dog. The real dog was buried. So uh, Togo lived to a you know ripe old age, 16, passed away peacefully. Uh, so in his honor they they did a mount, uh, which is you know creating like a, a likeness of Togo, and uh, displaying it in uh, in some Alaskan museum. Okay, and they made a movie. Which you know, it's a pretty big honor. Yeah. So, originally it was the Balto movie. You know, same story. Uh, then they they recently made a live action one. Just it was just released just last year, 2019, about Togo. Yeah, and our good friend playing the the hardened musher, Leonard Sapala. Okay. And this is his statue in New York's Central Park. Okay. Isn't that nice. Oh, and I should mention that um, the dog that plays Togo in the Togo movie by Disney is none other than one of his his children, named Diesel. Okay, he's a direct descendant of Togo. Yeah, it's cool, right? All right, so um, yeah, I think I think that's that's all for now. So yeah, heroic heroic dogs couldn't have done it without him. Okay, so the lesson of the story is don't stay in freaking Gnome, okay? Go stay in, like, you know, somewhere where there's lots of people, you know, so you can catch, uh, you can catch the latest disease that comes in, you know, you know just, just like that, you right? I mean, imagine you're stuck somewhere in, like, Madagascar, you, you gotta wait, like, years before you, you before you catch any of the, the latest trends, mm. COVID-19, what? You know, by the time it gets to you, it's probably like COVID-2000. And... Five. I don't know. I don't make this shit up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's all from me. I will leave you with that. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that. Okay. And I uh, hope you guys have a good night. And I'll check on you, on you guys some other time. Some other time. Yes, don't worry, you haven't heard the last of me just because I'm going back to work. Doesn't mean I've run out of things to talk about. <laughs> but yes, I, I, I admit I may be a little bit more preoccupied, but I will, I will, I will try to keep this going, because you know it's, if if no one else, it's entertaining me mainly, entertaining moi, yes, yours truly, okay. So uh, anyway, maybe I will, uh, you know, get to see you in person. Uh, you can share with me some of your anecdotes in the flesh, okay. Uh, but in the meantime, to uh, to stay safe, stay healthy, and maintain that physical distancing. That's like, oh, this is insane. Yeah, see, too close, too close. <sighs> okay. Anyway, if you don't have a dog, go get the dog. Uh, but don't buy. Adopt. Okay. Anyway, I've, I've talked too much, too much stuff. Okay. Catch you later. Sam out. Bye-bye.